Physics 111 in the making. So today, this is part two out of four, I believe, of the applications of the Lorentz equations. Tau, a very strange acronym, am I right? So now, um, we're going to look, today we're going to look at the, the phenomena uh, where you uh, where time and space is intertwined when you're going at relativistic speeds. Let me explain what I mean by that. When you're at rest, obviously, time and space are separate things. Space is obviously not relative, but time seems relative for everyone moving at ordinary speeds or at rest. No, I meant time seems absolute, sorry. However, Let's say you've, uh, you've been moving at the speed of light. Uh, now you're walking, you're observing a person on the ground. You, from space, you're observing a person on the ground move, uh, moving at zero meters per second, or precisely the rest of velocity. Now, the thing you want to find is uh, what is the time? What is time and space like for that? And we, uh, however, well, we in using that, we need to describe time and space for us first to describe time and space for them too. This comes precisely in the form of the Lorentz equations. What are these Lorentz equations? You may ask. Well, the Lorentz equations look like these. X prime x prime is equal to x minus vt, oh no, gamma times x minus vt just for the time dilation factor that also adds on to the length contraction or length dilation. And then we have y prime which is equal to uh, y if you're not moving in the y direction, flying at the speed of light. Now z prime, assuming you're not moving in the z direction. And then you have t prime that's going in the, uh, oh yeah, it doesn't go in any direction, but forwards, what am I saying? That's going to be like this. Sorry if this no commentary is annoying you. And then that's going to be, sorry, making a bit of mistakes plus no minus v over c squared everybody makes mistakes i apologize so now that's how you have to describe it when you were in motion at relativistic speed that's how you have to describe the motion of a normal person however when you're a normal person trying to describe a person moving at the speed of light well, then you're going to ha want to see the following. By the way, it's been proven that it's impossible to move the uh, speed of light. I just noticed that because um, I just want to add this bit in. So sorry if this was not in the original lesson plan. Because the uh, gamma is equal to 1 over delta 1 minus uh, v over c whole squared. So now, the thing is, if you set V equal to C, that's going to give you one minus one squared. You see where this is going, right? That gives you a zero on the bottom, which gives you one over zero, which is impossible to actually, uh, which doesn't make sense. So light is quite a strange phenomenon, but still, uh, this is probably because mass is uh, involved in here. But I haven't studied mass dilation or, and or contraction here yet. Yeah, let's get back on point. I'm running off it. Maybe at the speed of light. Uh, now, before that, I want to advertise again my new medicine. Mm. So, remember Lawrence equations? It's back. And this time, with even uh, less side effects. Lorentz equations version two. 
Now, there's only two side effects. Time dilation. And flashbacks to uh, Lawrence Equations 1. Now, oh, uh, now, it's still the same price of awesome two ninety nine million seven ninety two thousand four hundred fifty seven dollars and ninety nine cents. Buy now. Anyway, after buying that uh, medicine, you may continue with this lecture. Anyways, um, sorry for that abrupt advertisement. Now back to the point. Oh, uh, Alex Rodriguez and Albert are seemingly conversing. Anyway, um, back to the point. We have T prime equals to gamma times T minus V over C squared X. So, for a rest observer observing some uh, phenomena going at the speed of light, well, that rest observer would see the speed of light, okay, would see the speed of light, uh, yeah, yeah. You can uh, describe it like this. You just flip all the signs. And for a rest observer to describe another uh, person at rest his inertial reference frame, or IRF for short, yeah, they only need to know what to, uh, the position relative to them. They only need to know the other one's position relative to them. Now, with that out of the way, we can flip the sign because... When you're moving at the speed of light in an inertial reference frame, you see some, uh, uh, and you uh, walk past a person at rest. You see that person at rest speeding past you, uh, beating past you the other way at two ninety nine million seven hundred uh, blah blah blah. So now that means that we can just change the signs. If you were going this way, now you go this way. If you are observing from the other direction. So now, you just change all the signs next to V, which results in a change leading to this. P point equals to boom, bam, beam, up. Yeah. Okay. So now, uh, now that we have that, I want to make uh, something clear. I know we solved this in the last one, but uh, I want to give an example of what the, uh, this can do. So just as a recap from the last lecture, we're going to solve for u, which is average velocity in an interval, which is delta x over delta t, well, for which, so now, uh, so now when you're, uh, at, so now we can describe it like this. Gamma x minus vt, boom. Okay, now we have this, which is going to be, oh yeah, I forgot. You have to put this, v delta t. Albert. <laughs> okay, so now you have this, t minus v over c squared x. So now, when you cancel the gammas, it seems you have a hot, burning mess. However, this can be easily solved by dividing uh, uh, both sides by delta t, or multiplying both sides by one over delta t. One over delta t, or let's just do this. Delta t minus one, delta t minus one. Now, that gives us delta x over delta t minus v over delta t over delta t is 1 minus uh, v over c squared t, delta t. Oh, and x. vx over c squared delta t. So now, 
if you noticed, um, if you uh, well, look closely, you can actually split this up into V over C squared mm -hmm. times X over T, I mean delta X over delta T, which adds up to U ultimately. So we have U minus V over one minus UV over C squared. Which should be the correct equation for anything you have. Now, when you're moving at relatively small speeds, this reduces to a uh, regular Galilean equation. U is equal to U minus V over 1 minus UV over C squared. Now, this is going to be a very negligible number, which just leaves us with UV over 1 or U minus V, which is a reasonable number. U minus V over uh, VT, basically. Now, mm, and sorry for that absurd pause. And now, this can, uh, we're going to look at an example of this, but we're going to be dealing with relativistic speed, so beware. Say we have a rocket ship. I'm not the best at drawing rocket ships. This is the best I can do for a cartoon one. Yeah, it looks horrible. So it looks like a four-year-old draw this, but hey, no fear, just for an example. And then you have the speed of light, which goes like this. Now, now this will be equal to, so this, a rocket is going to go at three-fourths the speed of light, and this light is going to be equal to C. So now the question is, for an observer on the ground, what is the average velocity of this rocket? Well, it's kind of complicated, so uh, this is our example. I guess we'll get to it next time. Yeah, this is getting way too long. I'm pretty sure that Albert and uh, uh, Mr. Rodriguez are pretty bored now. So, uh, with that, bye everybody. Let me take this mic off.